Hey guys, so we're here, back in with another action figure review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Masterverse Target. Target spelled backwards is, take that, exclusive New Adventures of He-Man. He-Man, of course. Brought to us by the fine folks over at, say it with me now, Metalalalalalalalala, as well as my good buddy Evil Villain over on Instagram. I'll leave a link in the description below to his Instagram page where you can go over there, give him a follow, let him know Overlord sent you, but as always, be a dick. I'll find you, and you will not like the consequences, I assure you. That said, uh, this was a figure that when it was initially announced, I was on the fence. I wasn't sure if I was going to go down this road, a long and lonesome road, just like Tenacious D in Tribute. And get into these because New Adventures is not exactly my cup of tea when it comes to Masters of the Universe. I love 2000X. That was my shiznit when I was a kid. I like the old stuff, the vintage stuff, even the filmation stuff to an extent. Uh, I like a lot of the new stuff like Revelation and the upcoming Revolution series, the new Eternia stuff. And then, you know, some of the new things they introduce in classics. But New Adventures was never really my bag when it came to Motu, but when this figure came out, I kind of wanted it, and when it was gone, I was like, ah, oh, crap, I need that figure, but thankfully, Evil Villain was willing to trade me his for a figure he didn't have, so shout out to him once again for that, because uh, without him, I probably would have missed out on this figure, just like Tyrannosaurus Moth almost missed out on Tongue Lasher. I mean, seriously, what is with distribution with this Master of the Universe stuff lately? It seems like a pain right in the ass to get a hold of anything. But uh, nevertheless, let's move right along and get to the meat and taters of this review. Taking a look at He-Man's accessories here. He does come with a pair of grip hands. And uh, I will tell you, these hands are a B-I-T-C-H swap. Like this one, I thought for sure swapping this fist on was going to make this grip hand loose. It didn't. Which is cool, but I don't look forward to the arthritis and carpal tunnel in my 50s, so uh, thanks, Mattel. Uh, that said, he does, of course, come with a shield and a sword in piss yellow, so that's cool. I wonder if we'll get the green variants at some point. Maybe they'll make that a fan channel exclusive, so it's less hard to get. And then we also have the chest armor and helmet. Spear and magic helmet. Uh, not a spear, but... This chest armor, it just kind of clamps on to the body, and then you got these little slip tabs here. Which I will tell you, these little slip tabs here, a pain right in the arse to get out of there. So I had to heat it up, and uh, that's why it's not all one piece. But uh, I don't think I'm going to put this on, because quite frankly, I think he looks a little weird with this. Uh, it's a very bulky piece of chest armor, and the fact that he doesn't have pauldrons to help kind of round it out makes it look kind of funky. And then he also has the cool helmet, which I guess you could put on him uh, even without that. But it does look a little out of place, I would say. It doesn't look too big, but it does look out of place without that armor. So I don't think I'm actually going to use that. I like the harness here. It makes him look a little bit more like He-Man and less like some kind of weird Flash Gordon amalgamation, which is cool. Flash Gordon's the bomb diggity, but... Um, it, this is He-Man, not Flash Gordon. But uh, I really dig this figure, man. I think he's cool. Uh, from head to toe, he's wearing pants, which is sacrilege in Masters of the Universe, at least for He-Man. It's always suns out, guns out, skies out, thighs out when it comes to He-Man. But, you know, uh, that's how he was in New Adventure, so I can't fault the figure for that. Uh, he's got a cool ponytail. So he definitely looks like he's about to step into the 90s. Um, and then he's got a hole on his gauntlet on this side for the shield to go in. He's kind of pop it in there. I like to have it like that. I think it's supposed to be this way, but I like this. I feel like the shield could have been a little bigger, but I think it looks cool like that. It's more like a big chunky spawn gauntlet. And then, of course, the sword you can store on the back here. Like, shoo. 
which is probably how I'm going to display mine, even though it's a laser sword and that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> Shouldn't it just be the hill? I don't know, but it's new adventures. It's some goofy stuff, but oh, there we go. Now the sword's not wobbling all over the place. Um, but as far as articulation on this guy goes, his head's on the ball joint. Really good range out of that. You can look side to side, tilt. Ponytail is nice and soft, so it gets out of the way. Does have that hinge forward and back. Um, his arms can go out, back down, forward and back. He does have a bicep swivel, double elbow, which uh, is the double elbow. Nope, it's not stuck, so that's cool. Uh, his wrists will rotate and hinge, but uh, be careful swapping those. You might even want to heat the forearm just to swap those, because that, that was a pain in the ass swap that fist on um, I thought I was gonna mess up my fingers I wasn't worried about the figure because Mattel used some pretty heavy-duty stuff when they make their figures they're not like Hasbro and use the cheapest plastic known to man uh, they actually use some heavy-duty stuff so a kid could actually play with one of these and not break it I will tell you the neck pegs seem like uh, you could monkey those up if you aren't careful but the wrists I'm not really worried about but I don't think a little heat would hurt especially if you're like me and not the strongest guy ever. Uh, that said, he does have the cool new-ish torso articulation that does crunch forward and back and tilt side to side and has the rotation and whatnot. Which some of the figures lately, they've only had like half of this articulation. They haven't had like the full-blown, you tilt it and then you can rotate the torso. That or I've just got this whole joint wrong. Uh, he doesn't seem to have any... What the heck? Doesn't seem like his torso rotates. That's very weird. So maybe early on, this was not a uh, double-jointed thing. Interesting. So, uh, popping the arms down. He does have a waist cut. Works just fine. This is pre-drop-down hips, so he doesn't have those, but he does kick forward and back. And without a drop-down hip, he could still do the perfect splits. So I don't really see the point. Does he have a drop down? No. Um, he can do the perfect split, so I don't see the purpose of those drop down hips at all. Uh, he does have a thigh cut. Double knee. Ooh. Pop his leg. I will say a little loose on the double knee, especially the top joint on both sides, but it's not Vicron bad, so I'll let it slide. Uh, he does have a boot swivel, however. And a hinge in the foot with a rocker. And you can hear that, right? Where was that on Skelegod? I mean, seriously. Um, cool figure, though. I dig him a lot. Not the biggest New Adventures fan. It's not my mind's eye view for He-Man. Again, sun's out, guns out, sky's out, thighs out for me. Personally, um, even like the battle armor He-Man, I think, is a little cooler than this design will say, but I do really like this figure. Oh, he's being a little tough to stand right now. There we go. I do really like this figure. I think they did a bang up job on him. Um, and if you're a New Adventures fan, then uh, you're probably over the moon with this release. I think it's, I don't know if better than the classics is the right word, because it doesn't have all the detail the classics would have, but I might be able to uh, give you guys an opinion about that at some point in the future because uh, well, let's just say I got another trade with the evil villain in the works that involves that figure. Um, there we go. Now he's standing straight. I knew something was off. There. Fixed it. But uh, yeah, man. Cool figure. Dig him a lot. Kind of looks like you know, again, a Flash Gordon amalgamation or even something out of Skeleton Warriors more so than E-Man, but hey, it's okay to be different sometimes. Although, New Adventures kind of jumped the shark as far as being different goes. They went a little too far, but with that being said, it's time now that we move right along and take a look at some size comparisons. First up, here is our, is it Galactic Protector He-Man? I know we had some kind of subtitle, but I honestly can't remember what it is at this point alongside the only other New Adventures figure I've taken a look at from the Masterverse line thus far. There is one more we will be taking a look at tomorrow. 
you paid attention to this line and who's come out in it, you probably have an idea who that is. But we can talk about him today. We're talking about Intergalactic Skeletor, <laughs> who, due to his helmet, looks a little taller than He-Man. You guys know how I feel about villain and hero scaling. I always like the villains to be a little bigger than the heroes. And in this case, it appears that Skeletor is, and that is cool. I dig that a lot. And then we also have a more traditional looking He-Man. This is the 40th He-Man. Closer to my mind's eye view of the character. Obviously, 2000X is probably my mind's eye view of the character. But we don't have a 2000X Masterverse He-Man. And that's bullcrap. But either way, we do have this 40th He-Man. And what's going on with this 40th line? Are we going to get more figures out of this? Because uh, I want that Skeletor, but I don't want to pay 200 bucks for it. So, you know, it's probably more than 200 bucks at this point how old is that thing either way uh not the best figure but i don't think it's terrible i think it holds up pretty well but it could have been better you know everything could be better that said compared to the new adventures one i think the new adventures one did a better job of being the new adventures one than the 40th one did being a uh more traditional looking one but that's just me so moving them out of the way I think it's the head sculpt. I think the head sculpt's what's throwing people off. And of course, he's on the dated articulation scheme that's just not very good, uh, especially in the torso. And then, since this wouldn't be one of my reviews without him, his good old brother Mandibulus from Mythic Legions and the infamous Mkhar will have him spawn, who, as usual, that's right, towers over everyone because why wouldn't he right he's only done it for so long it just makes sense that he keeps doing it so that being said it's time now that we wrap things up some final thoughts overall and even though this is not my preferred look for the most powerful man in the universe at all i mean seriously he's wearing pants i gotta tell you being 110 percent honest here because that's what we do here at overlord productions I love this figure. This figure is awesome. It's kick-ass. I think it's a cool look for He-Man, despite the fact it's not my mind's eye view of this character. I like his little ponytail. I like the quasi-Flash Gordon vibes we're getting here. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing what the fine folks over at Mattelalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalal